so now we're ready to go. Now, most people make a mistake at lumbar puncture by following the skin creases. Now, normally the skin crease is actually too low. What you've got to do is make sure you've felt the spinous process. You've got your L4 line. Spinous process, say that's your L4 space. And if you actually put your fingers either side of the L4 space and imagine parallel tram lines, that gives you a visual guide to get your needle in. With your visual guide, if you put your bleb in just between your fingers there, raise your small bleb, then use your second needle through your bleb to get your trajectory. And insert a bit more local anaesthetic, making sure you're not in any blood vessels. Once you've done that, because the skin's instantly anaesthetised, you can then take your spinal needle through your bleb and, in, and insert it. Now you're going at a slight angle. Okay, it's about a 45 degree angle. Remembering that if you can get that needle in at that angle, that trajectory, without hitting bone, then you get the needle up to about halfway to three quarters of the way in, you should be looking to get CSF out. If you do hit bone, you've just got to adjust your trajectory slightly and try again. If you're unsuccessful like this, then you would withdraw the needle and just try again at another angle. And as long as you don't come into contact with bone, the atraumatic needles often find their own way, whereas the traumatic needles often lodge in bone. And eventually you should get CSF. I think we're getting CSF coming out now. Once you've had a few drops of CSF come out, just put the stylet back in and get your manometer ready. The main thing with the manometer is to make sure you loosen it before you attach it because they can be very stiff. That is an off um, tap, so you want that off out to the outside world so that CSF will enter this, this entry here and rise up through the manometer. You also want to have your CSF bottles ready to go, although usually your assistant will do that for you. So once you have your, your CSF ready, needles out, attach the manometer and wait for pressure to rise. You may have to wait anything up to a minute for pressure to rise for a lumbar puncture. Normal pressure is between 6 and 20 centimetres. One study said that 95% would lie between 8 and 21. In obese subjects, the normal pressure can be up to 25, according to a study from the States. But anything, anything over 6 is almost certainly normal. Anything below 20 um, and greater than 6 is certainly normal. Over 20, you may well have a high pressure syndrome. The main error people make with measuring pressure is that the head on the bed is slightly too high and it gives an artificially high pressure. Once you've measured the, once you've got the pressure equilibrated here, we're sitting, we're still climbing here. If we just for argument's sake say that um, pre that's our pressure here, what we can do then is collect our samples. And you can collect
collect samples in two ways. We can just turn the tap off to the manometer and then just allow samples to slowly come directly from the spinal canal or you can turn that off to the, to the body and you'll get a rush of CSF down the pressure gauge. When you're collecting specimens you need at least 20 drops per bottle because you're looking for at least 2 mils per bottle to go to the lab to give them a good chance of being able to analyse it properly. Now many people worry that if they take um, large samples they're going to injure or harm their patients in some way but actually you've got to remember that you make 500 mils of CSF every day which means that 21 mils are made per hour so 10 mils will be replaced by your body within half an hour of the procedure so um, you know, taking generous samples is well within your right here. So here's coming up to 20 drops now and once you've collected that sample you can move on to the next etc. So if we now imagine we've now taken all our samples what you then do is you can disconnect your manometer. Before you take the needle out you should actually put the stylet back in because if you don't put the stylet back in um, the stylet doesn't go back in, then you can um, draw a bit of nerve rooting and cause injury. Then you just pull the needle out and then you apply a firm dressing to the site like a MEPOR dressing. After care for lumbar puncture you should really be just getting your patients to lie for a few minutes till they're comfortable. You don't have to have prolonged bed rest as bed rest does not actually influence the risk of post lumbar puncture headache. It's really just being humane to let people lie for a while after lumbar puncture, um, but prolonged bed rest is not required.